If you couldn't tell by my last couple of videos, I'm a moderate fan of the Pokemon series. I say a moderate fan because it's mostly just nostalgia at this point, and can you blame me? It's been a thing pretty much all of my life. I've been indoctrinated to like fluffy cute animals. These days, I'm not really that into it, but hey, I stuck with it for quite a long time. I still played it when I was in my early teens. You know, that age group where everyone just decides Pokemon's not cool anymore and you're a baby if you play it, but I stuck by my beliefs. And when Pokemon eventually came back into fashion again, I was ahead of the curve. But by that point, I didn't actually have any friends anymore. Was it worth it? Maybe. I have many fond memories of hanging out with virtual animals instead of talking to real people. But like I said, I pretty much lost interest after Diamond and Pearl, and I just replayed the first three generations constantly. Though recently, I had a bit of a craving for some new Pokemon, so I grabbed the first Pokemon game to hand and decided to play it. Pokemon Black 2. There's, there's two of them. So, let's start a new game of Black 2, shall we? Of course, we have the standard intro sequence, which is presented by this fine lady. Oh my, my virgin senses are a-tingling. She asks you the usual stuff, you know, what's your name? Are you a boy or a girl? I haven't had any contact with a girl my age for around three years now, so of course I pick the girl. But no one cares about the intro, it's boring. I want to play the game. Well, you're in luck because the game is starting and there's a lady and she watches some petals. Then she just stands there for a bit. You, you, you're going to do anything? Oh, she's reacting. So basically, this is your mummy and she's on the phone to the hot professor because the professor's got a Pokemon for you, except she lives in a different town. So she's sent someone to deliver the Pokemon, except that person isn't coming to your house. Instead, she's hiding somewhere in the city and you have to go and find her based on the description of her hat. What? Seriously, was this written by the creator of Die Hard or something? I'm hiding somewhere in the city. I've got a bomb. Have fun finding me! Your mummy tells you all this, and then decides now is a good time to give you a few pointers on the game's mechanics. Like, I, I don't care, I wanna go get my Pokemon. Luckily, it asks you if you already know this stuff. I said I did, but then it proceeded to tell me anyway. What was the point? Why did you even ask me? It asks me if I know about another thing. I say yes, preparing for the wall of text about to be bestowed upon me, but then it doesn't tell me. Why do you tell me for one thing, but not the other? I mean, I'm glad it didn't tell me, but I, I don't understand. Whatever, let's just play the game already. Welcome to Aspersia City, a name that sounds worryingly like Asperger City. And if I was any more sensitive than I actually am, I might be offended by this. Luckily though, I came to terms with my severe autism years ago, so whatever. I continue my search for this elusive delivery person, and somewhere along the line I pick up this Dennis the Menace looking character as well. Not entirely sure what his problem is, but it's okay because I found what I'm looking for my Pokemon. And then there's a Pokemon battle or something because that's just what you do in Pokemon, right? And so it is that we finally get to the topic of this video. You see, because after the battle, the delivery lady brings us to a Pokemon center and I'm sure you know what happens next, right? She proceeds to tell us every single thing about the Pokemon center. I already know about the Pokemon center. This is like my sick Pokemon game at this point. I don't need to know all this stuff. Just let me play the game. Great, it's over. Can we go now? Evidently not. Yeah, I really needed to learn how to use the running shoes ag again. And I actually forgot what the town map did. Is it is it over yet? Uh, nope, we have to go catch a Pokemon now. And if you weren't entirely sure what to do when your Pokemon are hurt, that fact is just reinforced a bit. Are you beginning to see the problem here? Like, yeah, I get it. You need to teach new players how to play your game. But Game Freak, you'd released around seven sets of Pokemon games at this point. You've got to accept that a couple of your buyers are going to be returning fans. Gold and Silver handled this pretty well. They knew that people were going to be returning from the first Pokemon games, so you could skip the tutorials. Red and Blue, the game that needed the most, didn't even have any tutorials. Well, 
Except one, I guess. Overall, I'd say Pokemon's tutorials are pretty good for new players. It's just frustrating when you already know everything and just want to play the game. Okay, let's move on from Pokemon. No one even likes Pokemon anyway, it's a bad game. It's not like I've wasted hundreds of hours of my life doing absolutely nothing when I could be doing something useful. Like, studying. And then maybe I wouldn't be stuck here making Pokemon videos for a living. I mean, I say for a living, I earn like $3 a month. And then I spend it all on these Pokemon games from Japan. Yeah, they're probably fake, but they look good to me. And they look good to all my friends when they come round to see them. They don't know the difference and they all say, wow! This is why you don't have any real friends. And I guess they have a point because all of my friends are actually imaginary. Back to the topic of the video, tutorials. One of the most important parts of a game, but also one of the easiest to mess up. You've got to teach players how to play your game, but you know, it, it's also a game, so it has to be fun, right? Some games hit this balance perfectly, but then again, there were others that didn't hit it so well. For example, RuneScape, or more specifically, old school RuneScape. I remember way back in the day when I was a little boy at school and my friends came up to me and said, hey, have you played this new game called RuneScape? And I said, no, I haven't. And so I went home and I registered and I found myself here on Tutorial Island. And so I played through the tutorial and it probably didn't take that long, but for a nine year old kid, it felt like an eternity. I remember watching that bar and thinking, this is the slowest thing on planet Earth. And when I finally completed it, I decided I'm gonna have a break now, and then didn't open the game for another year or so. I have to admit though, as boring as it was, the tutorial does do a pretty good job of teaching you the basic mechanics. The thing is, I had no idea what the game was actually about, so for me, going through such a long tutorial just wasn't worth it. It might have helped if I knew more about the game, and then I might have felt more motivated to learn about it. In reality though, I'm making a bit of a big deal about new players being forced to play a tutorial. The real problem is returning players being forced to play a tutorial. Let's think about this for a second, Jagex. You've got RuneScape 3, that's the latest version, so that's where all the new players are gonna be going, right? And you've got old school RuneScape, surprisingly directed towards the people who preferred the old version. Why then do you put a mandatory tutorial on a game that's almost entirely comprised of returning players? I don't understand, who is this tutorial helping? All it's gonna do is annoy nostalgic RuneScape 2 fans. And it's not like they don't know that there's gonna be returning players, it literally asks you how much experience you have with RuneScape. Oh, you're an experienced player? Well, you probably don't remember everything. Why don't you go and learn how to make a fire? Thanks, Jagex. I actually forgot how to click a rock. It's not like they can't change anything because it's an old build or something. They've actually added stuff to it. This is the only useful part of the tutorial. Why isn't this at the beginning? Just let players know what this is and then give them the option to skip. It's not not Jagex, plus hire me. I live close by, I can, I can take the bus. I'll do anything, I, I need money. As much as I hate this part of RuneScape, eventually it does end, at which point you're free for, well, forever. Once the main game begins, you can pretty much do whatever you want. What's that, you wanna go to the wilderness? Well, I'm not stopping you. I mean, you're gonna die, but go for it. I remember the first time I entered a PvP server. I was like, I wonder what PvP means. Well, safe to say I found out pretty quickly. Rest in peace, Mithralama. But like I said, the tutorial eventually ends, unlike some other games, for example, Black and White, Peter Molyneux's first game from Lionhead. This game has one of the worst tutorials I've ever known to exist. It's bad enough for new players, but if you're a returning player, then why are you even bothering? Just kill yourself now and get the pain over with. Well, it can't be that bad, I hear you saying. Well, why don't we just take a look at it, shall we? So basically, if you don't know what black and white is, it's a god game, and it begins on this beach. And immediately, boom, tutorials. And that's not a bad thing, but the execution is just awful. It begins by teaching you how to move around, and that's all well and good. The explanation's a bit slow, but we'll brush over it. And then it goes on to teach you how to look around. It teaches you how to rotate the camera, and then it teaches you how to rotate the camera again, but in a different direction. 
why they both use the same method, and they are both completely obsolete when you realize you can just use the middle mouse button to look around. Whatever, let's see how you zoom in and out. To zoom, you click and hold both the mouse buttons. You move the mouse towards you to zoom out. Or we could just use the scroll wheel. Simple. I guess this game was made in the days before Mouse 3 was very common. But come on, they programmed all this stuff in. Why can't they detect if you have a mouse wheel? It can detect one of these stupid mice, but why can't it detect a scroll wheel? But whatever, as a new player you can live through being told the controls. However, the game just doesn't seem to accept that this is enough. Leader, you haven't used your zoom ability much. Yes I have! What are you talking about? I don't need to learn how to zoom in and out again. I don't get why the game feels the need to insult your intelligence at every step. Like, I can remember the controls. The content of the tutorial isn't even the worst part. The pacing is awful as well. You've got this big lion called the guide who shows you how to do stuff, but every so often he just goes to sleep. Like, wake up! I want to learn! It's kind of an incentive for the player to go check out some of the side missions, but the side missions don't do anything, and as a returning player, it's just infuriating. Like, this tutorial would be over by now if he just woke up. Having the pace of a game decided for you is never fun. Like, you just want to move on, but the game's like, nope, gotta wait, gotta wait to progress. Black and White would be one of my favourite games of all time if it wasn't for this tutorial. Often I want to replay it, but then I just think about how boring this tutorial is, and... I just, I just can't do it. It just never ends. The entire first level is made up of learning and there's only five levels in the game. Finally, we're at level two. We can start playing the game, but nope, the tutorials continue here as well. Will they never end? We're approaching one quarter of the entire game being made up of lessons at this point. <sighs> Nerd Cubed once said, Peter Marnie thinks that every other person in the world is an idiot, doesn't he? And after playing this game, I think I'm... I think I'm beginning to see his point. Please, game developers, have some faith in your audience. We're not all stupid. Okay, we are, but after being told a million times how to scroll in and out, I think I might have the hang of it. You got that, Mr. Peter Mullen, you, 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 you understand? Now, can you make an actual successor to black and white that isn't a piece of sh like this? That'd be really nice, thanks. And to the rest of you, thank you for watching my 12 minute rant on video games. I'm gonna go outside and have a life now? <laughs> nah, I'm stuck here forever. This meme will never die because we are in the beam. Be